Hello everybody and welcome back to Thessalby Talks 3 for the day of May 16th, 2016. Today we will not talk about news, but we're going to talk about Doom. Here is my pseudo review of Doom that just came out on Friday. I have literally traveled and traveled the depths of hell just for you guys out there. And like Sam and Dean Winchester, I am back with a vengeance. I am back to tell you what I found, what I saw, and what I liked about it. And really what I hated about it, but there's not much hate. I can tell you this right now. Now, let's first get into the music of this game. Now, Doom is a very metal, thrashy, very hardcore rock type of game. If you've never played the old school Dooms, you saw a lot of pretty much monsters running at you at full speed, trying to bite your head off, trying to shoot you, all this other stuff, and you just got hardcore, I, not monster rap, but <laughs> you have hardcore rock and roll just pounding your head, metal, freaking throwing out demon horns, whatever you want to call it. You have that just bouncing around in your head. This holds up to that. The metal in this game is a little bit electronic, but it gives you such a good feel of what it feels like just to go around blowing off demons' heads, kicking demons in the stomach, and throwing off their heads. This is a very violent game, by the way, guys. So I will be very, very violent in my speaking tone, so just give you guys a heads up. I'm sorry if I cuss or anything like that. I will probably bleep it out. But anyway, music in this game is absolutely phenomenal now if i had a soundtrack to run to or anything like that i would actually play this soundtrack that is how much it would get my heart beating and going throughout the combat sections of the game now of course there are the quiet moments in this game where there isn't very much music and those parts they kind of give you a build up to what's to come uh, anytime there are actual enemies on the screen, the music does kick in a little bit and then it starts ramping up, ramping up, ramping up. And once all the enemies are gone from the screen, it kind of just fades out into like a weird fuzzy sound and that's it. It doesn't need any more music than that, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't need any more than that. It gives you the perfect amount of hardcore death rock, dub death rock, whatever you want to call it, electronic death rock that it needs to have and needs to be. Now another big thing I do want to talk about is the movement speed in this game. Now we all know that Call of Duty, we all know the Halos of the world, we all know the Battlefields of the world, where you're running you know, at a brisk four miles per hour, or whatever, three and a half miles per hour, you're kind of jogging, and when you sprint you go on full on speed, about maybe six or seven miles per hour. This game turns up to 10. I swear, it feels like you're just constantly on speed and running around. Now this makes the combat seem a lot better because when you're running around and doing a lot of other stuff, you don't want to stand still. If you stand still in this game for more than maybe five seconds, you will get absolutely obliterated, denied, whatever other euphemisms you want to say for the word dead, you're going to kick the bucket no matter how much that you just stand still in one spot. Do not stand still in this game if you go out and play, if you go out and buy it. I will tell you that pro tip, pro strat right now. Do not stand still. This game is all about moving, 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 moving. You want to move around as fast as you can and as nimble as you can. With the camber skills of climbing up onto ledges as well, it gives the game great movement speed and movement fluidity. You're going around, you're shooting imps that are throwing baseball type of fireballs at you, which also the animation in this game is phenomenal. I must cuss right there. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, if you actually watch the demon imps uh, throw stuff at you, they're throwing baseball pitches behind their backs, doing all other stuff. This adds to how fast you need to be in this game, which gives it a great 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 sense of speed agility uh, you're going around and you're pretty much if you're playing with mouse and keyboard you probably have a lot better sense of uh, how this game works than I did um, I actually play with the controller I played it on my PC 
So I wasn't very accurate in my shooting, but there is, I think, a little bit of generous auto-aim in this game if you're playing a controller, just to make sure you have that nice bit of fun being able to jump around using a double jump, using the camber climb, and using your own speed against the enemies. Uh, especially when facing the, I believe they're called Hell Knights. These Hell Knights are very fast, very mobile, probably about a little bit taller than you are in the actual game, and will go around jumping at you. But if you're on the move constantly and you actually kind of strafe around them, you actually have a lot better time facing them with a shotgun or the pulse rifle. Let's talk a little bit about the BFG in this game. Um, this is one of my little bit of quirks that I did not like about this game. is that the BFG only has about three uses to it Whenever when you do get it inside the game. Spoiler, I know. Spoiler down here. You get the BFG. It's a Doom game. Of course you're going to get the BFG. If you don't know what the BFG stands for, <laughs> go look it up. Um, or hell, I'll just tell you right now. It's called the Big Fucking Gun. 9,000, it's a giant, giant pretty much just pulse ball that shoots out and spreads out to all the enemies within the area. Um, it didn't seem as effective when our, whenever I used it, but, you know, I could have been using it wrong. Uh, I only used it when I really needed to, when the shit hit the fan, that's when I used it. Um, I mean, really... What else are you going to do with the BFG? Especially when you have three uses on it, you're just going to use it very sparingly and only in very small amounts. Uh, the actual ammunition for the BFG is not readily available in every single fight and combat encounter that you get into. But it's a BFG and I still enjoyed using it. I just wish I was able to use it a lot more, especially going against uh, the bigger type of demons that come out. And especially with later on in the game, when they start throwing three or four of those giant demons at you at the same time, and you're sitting there with low ammunition as it is for the game. Uh, but what are you going to do? That's how they did it for balance. So I'm not going to complain that much. But hey, guys, don't use the BFG as long, unless you really need it. That's my another pro tip for you guys. Now let's actually go with the whole entire weapon wheel here. Um, you actually use right bumper on the Xbox One controller to actually switch uh, to actually switch weapons and all that stuff uh, to quick to quick switch as well it was actually a very hard time for me to get rid of the mindset that I had to choose Y or X to even reload or anything like that uh, because you know you hit R1 or usually you hit the right bumper to use melee attacks and for some odd reason that was in my head as melee attack goes on the right or the uh, right bumper. So every single time, like for the first couple hours, for the first couple of hours, this is me talking. This is my dumb butt talking. But for the first couple of hours, I would go up to big demons and hit R1 and go, heck yeah, I'm gonna blow this demon's head off with my fists and my kicks. And I would switch to a different gun by accident. And I would totally miss the melee kill or the glory kill as they call it. And that was not a fun time, I can tell you that. So get used to actually uh, using R, the R1 or right bumper to switch your guns. Uh, there are about, I believe, nine different guns in the game. Um, I don't have a count right in front of me. I actually just got done playing it like two seconds ago before I actually recorded this. Uh, this says will be talks free. So you do got your shotgun, you got super shotgun, you got your pulse rifle, gauze rifle. Heavy, uh, heavy machine gun type of gun. It's a chain gun as well. And all of these guns have secondary modes and third dairy modes. I don't think third dairy is a word, but you know what I'm saying. There are actually two different types of modifications for each one of these guns, and they're all upgradable with an upgrade system in the game, which allows you to spend tokens that you earn by doing combat feats and doing different types of combat kills in the game. Uh, you get these combat coins and you end up with maybe about one modification that you use all the time and another modification that you just use to spend all the coins on. Uh, there is one gun that sticks out in my head that I absolutely love and it is the assault rifle in this game. Or at least the heavy assault rifle, whatever you want to call it. It makes a nice thump 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 noise 
as well as if you hold down the weapon modification, uh, which is L2 or left trigger, if you want to call it that, uh, it actually shoots out little teeny tiny missiles and it just does a barrage of missiles when it's fully upgraded. Fully upgraded barrage missiles into a Hell Knight or any type of other bigger demon. Uh, it's actually fun just to watch them kind of twitch and turn and kind of blow up. Um, unfortunately, you don't get the glory kill for that, which I'll go into glory kills on next segment right now. Um, but it's fun just watching all these like little itty bitty itty bitty missiles being uh, shot at the enemy and watching them just blow up in a huge flame of glory of you just wasted about 50 rounds of ammunition on this one dude. But heck, it looks pretty damn sweet. Now one thing that actually has been introduced into Doom is the glory kill as they call it. You do enough damage on this enemy right here in front of you, you're going to run up to it and you're going to punch it to death. Or how, punch it to smithereens? I don't know what you call killing a demon, but I mean, I'll mean, i ask Sam and Dean when I see him next time. But you, if you hit up an enemy at least a certain amount of times and you put him into a stun state, you end up being able to put a glory kill on them. And that actually, that glory kill will give you health. Now you can go through all entire game thinking, I don't need these glory kills. Who needs them? They are a waste of time. They're a waste of two seconds of my time. If I do this on every single enemy, I'm wasting so much time. It's not a waste of time. It's not a waste of time, people. I'm telling you this. It is actually a fun mechanic in the game to give you at least that last bit of 10 health or something like that. You're low on health. You got 20 health left. You got four different Hell Knights coming at you at the same time. And you kill one of those Hell Knights with a glory kill. And it boosts you back up from 10 health to maybe about 80 health. This is a very essential part of the game that you need to learn how to use and you need to learn how to use it quickly because the first levels of this game with the imps throwing fireballs at you and you only have 100 health, oh boy, oh boy is it hard. So go ahead and make sure you use those glory kills in this game. I love the addition of this glory kill. Also the fact that there are so many different ways to actually use glory kills. Uh, in the actual challenges part of each mission, you actually are encouraged to use different types of glory kills. From killing imps from behind, from killing the possessed from behind, any type of, you know, aim down the right leg and you'll sweep them up and jam their boot into their own mouth. I wish if I could do a super cut right here next to me, I would totally do a super cut of every single glory kill there is. But, hey, you guys should find out what those glory kills are. Uh, one of the more disgusting, I can tell you this right now, one of the more disgusting uh, disgusting ones are, um, I forgot what they're called, but the big giant blobby uh, demons, you actually kind of just go into their stomach and rip out their intestines and shove it down their throat. Yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not very PG, I know, but damn, is it, is it horrible to watch. Now, of course... First person shooter, you're going to have a lot of areas that you need to kill enemies in. And this game actually does that very well with a lot of verticality in the actual combat arena areas. Now, to activate a combat arena pretty much in this game, you're going to be going into gore nest, ripping out the heart of a gore nest, and summoning in probably about 20 or 30 demons, one after the other, one after the other. Um, now, this kind of got a little bit slightly repetitive, but it gave me a lot of just moments of where I took my controller and was gripping it to fear my life. These combat sections last maybe about five to 10 minutes each. And oh my gosh, everyone, some of these combat arenas are complicated as hell. I don't know how to explain it. I was playing on the, on the default setting and I was having trouble. I would hate to play this in nightmare mode which I probably will end up playing this on Nightmare Mode because I, I'll probably hate myself at least once or twice, especially after playing Dark Souls. But the actual combat arenas for this game are really hella hard, guys. Uh, you go around and you pretty much start with the smaller demons, so like let's say a couple imps or a couple reapers or something like that. And then they'll spawn in two or three, maybe four pinkies, and then some hell knights. And then more reapers, and then more just 
uh, caper demons, more of those fat pudgy demons as well. These combat arenas can get super duper, super, super complicated and just tough to deal with, especially with the amount of ammunition I have. Uh, but luckily, you know, you have a chainsaw that will actually rip through different types of demons and give you a certain amount of uh, certain amount of ammunition whenever you use a chainsaw on them. You know, it says even the tooltips, the bigger the demon, the more ammunition you get. But in order to get more of that chainsaw juice, you have to go through the upgrade system. Now there is an upgrade system in this game. And it is pretty much just you find a collectible. Uh, you get your first one, I think, a bit later in the game. Uh, maybe about... I, I forgot actually when I got that first upgrade. Uh, but it can't be more or less than like four or five, like four different chapters into the game. Uh, where you actually get your first upgrade. And you get your first health upgrade, armor upgrade, or weapons upgrade. The weapons upgrade actually gives you more ammunition to spend on the on the enemies. And then there's the health upgrade and the armor upgrade. I never touched the armor upgrade. For some reason in this game, I didn't enjoy and I didn't feel like the armor did much. So I ended up just going for health and armor, and or not health and armor, health and ammunition in this game. Now whether or not I'm missing something big, huge, and I'm just an idiot when I play video games. But I didn't collect that much armor in this game and I did fine. I mean, I, it was a struggle at bit of times, but something tells me that the armor is not very much incorporated in the actual health system. Now, I did play a little bit of multiplayer um, today. I've I've spent the whole entire weekend trying to beat that damn single player campaign, and I'm pretty close to finishing it. So I don't know whether or not it just tanks off at the end and it's horrible at the very end of this game. But I can tell you this right now, playing up to where I played to, probably maybe about an hour left of this game I really have been enjoying it the actual combat of the white knuckle gripping controller um, that I have in the combat is actually a really nice adrenaline rush for me especially coming out of Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne and all these other games where they just kind of beat you down and they make sure that you want to just stop stop playing I do not want to stop playing I wanted to keep on playing but I had to get out of that world to do stuff here in the real world. I mean, even today, I did not want to stop playing the single player. I had to actually start playing the multiplayer for you guys to at least see it a little bit. But at least from what I can tell from the multiplayer, it's it's team deathmatch. There is one mode called uh, freeze tag, which I I do not enjoy at all. Um, I'm not here for the multiplayer. I can tell you that much. Um, I will have an updated review of the actual snap map proportion of this game which is snap map is pretty much like I guess kind of like a forge in Halo um, I'm pretty sure that if I have any true dude fans that say that if I say that to them they'll probably kill me literally uh, but you know it kind of reminds me of what forge is in Halo so if you want to use the snap the snap map <laughs> try saying that three times fast the uh, snap map it actually seems pretty fun. It actually seems pretty in or in uh, in 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 uh, inventive. Why not just use the word inventive? It seems very inventive, um, but it also seems very fun. Making your own custom maps, making your own custom layouts, making your own custom type of games. So you know we'll get back to Snap Map soon, uh, probably later on in the week or probably next week, probably next Monday when you know I talk for you on Monday. So, now with that multiplayer falling a little bit short on what I expected from any type of Doom, because I didn't play the beta or anything like that, and what id Software has done with multiplayer in the past, has kind of a little bit fallen short for me, and I wish it wasn't much included in this game. I actually wish it was just the either snap map and then the single player game campaign, and that's it. But, you know... First person shooter nowadays, as well as it being the Doom franchise, it needed a first person shooter uh, type of multiplayer campaign or multiplayer setting. So, whatever, I'm not going to really, I don't really care about it that much. But I will love to give this game a four and a half out of five stars. It's not the most perfect game in the world, but it is pretty damn close. So, go out and buy this game. That's all I'm going to talk about today, ladies and gentlemen. 
I'm going to go play more Doom. I'm going to try to beat that damn single player campaign already. I'm so close to the end. I can just sense the ending of that game coming up. So go out and play it. Go out and buy it. Whatever you, however you get your video games nowadays. So my name is Tesselby. I am talking free today. It is May the 16th, 2016. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe down below. The review couch is back in action, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everybody.